12th stage episode of the blog series. I ask you this week to provide any questions you may have about histopathology and the FRC PATH examination. Today we'll be joined by Tom Calvert and we're going to answer all of your questions. Okay, so we've got 20 questions which we've collected of you from Facebook, from LinkedIn, from Twitter, and now we're going to quiz Tom to see how much you know about his pathology. Hopefully, a lot. it's enough. Okay. <laughs> right, so question one. Do I need to take FRC PATH in order to work as a histopathologist in the UK? Uh, yes, you do. Well, yes, you do and no, you don't. So it would give you the best opportunity to get a job in the UK because yeah. most trusts are looking for histopathology consultants and uh, FRC PATH uh, shows them that you're working to that level clinically. However, uh, you can go down the route of taking PLAB, but that m may make your job chances slightly mm. slimmer. So you can use PLAB for your genes your registration but it might hinder your opportunities in finding a job. FRC path is the way that we would recommend. So I think that if you are looking for particularly senior level positions within histopathology, then um, FRC path is the, is the way to go. That kind of leads on to number two, which is okay. can I get GMT registered with just FRC path one? Uh, only if you were to sit PLAB and apply that way. Mm. So if you were hoping to sit FRC path part one and then do a language qualification and then apply Unfortunately, that isn't going to work. Uh, you have to have full FRC path if you're going to use the qualification as evidence uh, for your postgraduate medical qualification for your GMC license. Um, so if you've got FRC path part one only, you would still have to go through uh, PLAB. So you can have PLAB one, PLAB two, and take your FRC path one, and that is going to get you, would you say, a better job? Yeah, I mean, if you've got if you've got at least one part of FRC path, at least it shows to potential employers that you have, um, you know, you're very serious about it and you've got enough experience in the past the, the kind of written part of the exam. Okay, question three. If I have FRC path, does that mean I can enter straight in at consultant level? Uh, it very much depends on your experience and the trust. So uh, technically speaking, you won't be able to take a permanent job because you need to be on the specialist register. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that you've completed it, but you're not on the specialist register in this scenario. Um, However, you could take a locum consultant job. So it kind of depends on the trust. Most people will hire somebody who's got full FRC path at a consultant level on a fixed term contract. Uh, and the idea would be at that point that they would maybe help you go through uh, what's called CSER so that you could gain access to specialist register. Mm -hmm. And that would allow you to work in a permanent capacity as a consultant. Fantastic. And then question number four is, what is the job market like in histopathology in general in the NHS? It's fantastic. Uh, histopathology, as far as I've been doing this for 10 years and more, has always been a really high demand area within medical mm. recruitment. Yeah. Um, we get a lot of demand for it. FRC path, I think because the, because the exam is so difficult to pass, particularly if you look at the pass rates for uh, international candidates, uh, tend to be pretty low, I think, to memory, below... 30 or 40 percent mm. uh, for the path part two setting um, it means that the number of candidates coming through to take jobs is is relatively low in comparison to the number of positions so there are a lot of opportunities out there for histopathologists um, whether you are interested in uh, pediatric neurology cyto flow symmetry you know whatever your your sort of subspecialist interest area is there are lots of opportunities for you so um, once you've done your frc path that really is the kind of the keys opens to the, door. the doors for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, again, you've just answered my next question. So, question number six, um, question number five, sorry. What are the options to subspecialization post histopathology? So, I think I just mentioned you've yeah, got pediatric, pediatric pathology, neuropathology, yeah. cytology, yeah, and, and forensic <laughs> pathology. Um, so, I mean, those are the kind of four areas you can go into. Largely in the UK, you'd be expected to do a bit of everything. Mm. Uh, I know that not all pathologists are um, happy to do a job that's fully consisting of, uh, of cut up, but you would be, as a pathologist, generally looking at all sort of tumour sites and uh, diagnostics reports. Okay, and then what is the pay? Quite a general question. What yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on the grades that you're going yeah. in at. If you're a specialty doctor, the pay scale varies uh, from, I think it's like £40,000 to £74,000-ish. If you're a consultant, it's about seventy-eight to £110,000. Uh, you can find NHS salary scale online. We've also done blogs, blogs yeah. and, and podcasts about it. Um, 
it depends on your experience. So trust should be taking into account previous experience that you've got at consultant level, if that's what you're being hired as, uh, and then attributing that to a particular point in the salary scale. Most of the demand, as I've said, is at consultant level. It's very rare that you would find uh, non-training level uh, specialty doctor roles within this pathology yeah. uh, for, for overseas candidates. Um, but if you are, same, same rule applies, they'll be looking at the years experience that you have within pathology and then applying that to various points on the pay scale. Um, so as a broad range, <laughs> I, I, for a while, I, I think consultant level is probably the most applicable yeah. one. 78 to 110,000 pounds would be um, it would be about right. Uh, if you do want more you know, specific advice based on your own uh, situation, then send us an email, get in touch and we'll help you. Okay, so the next question is going back to the Advocacy Path exams. And they would like to know what is the gap that's allowed between part one and part two? So uh, to my knowledge, it's seven years. So you can have a seven year gap between the first and second part. The part two exam is really difficult. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they appreciate that, you know, you're going to need time to study. You might yeah. take more than one attempt at it as well. Yeah. Um, so I think you can have up to four attempts at, during that time. But seven years is the maximum amount yeah. of time before they would say that you're probably and not And then it's up aligned. to you kind of when you decide to apply for the FRC Path 2, obviously, yeah. revision. You just need to take into account that it is a really difficult exam. So you need to prepare yourself for that and leave the time. Yeah, we do yeah. We do get some doctors who will do the PLAB route for GMC registration and mm -hmm. do FRC Path Part 1. Yeah. And they want to come to the UK to study for Part 2. That's fine. Again, I would say, though, that if you can pass Part 2 at all, it would give you a much, much better opportunity when you get to be yeah. good, finding a good job. Okay, next question. Are the years of experience prior to obtaining my FRC path given consideration? Yes, they are, or they should be. Um, every trust interprets the salary scale slightly differently, but if you have been working in another country as a consultant for 10, 15 years, mm. five years, whatever it might be, and you pass FRC path just in the last year of that time, they should be accounting all the previous years yeah. of experience yeah. as a consultant when they calculate your salary yeah. in, in line with whatever salary scale they're using. So be that specialty doctor or um, consultant level. Yeah, so any specific experience in histopathology on your CV, it should be taken account for. Yeah, and that's important. It's, it's specific experience within that specific specialty at whichever grade. So if you are applying for a consultant role and it's your first consultant role, they won't take into account experience no. that you've got previously. Specialty docs are it would be anything post core training that they would uh, they would uh, use. Okay, are oh, this is quite generous question. Are foreign specialists given equal opportunities for fellowships and PhD PhDs? Yeah, they they should be. Um, I mean, there's there's quite stringent anti discrimination laws in the mm -hmm. UK. You shouldn't be discriminated against because of where you studied or or where you're coming from. Uh, obviously, in terms of deaneries first refusal is given to those in the UK, but that doesn't di discriminate against those who have arrived from overseas and are in the UK then making an application. So within lots of the other specialties that we work with, um, you'll find the doctors will come into the UK, work in a service level capacity, and whilst here be applying for their first training role. Uh, and they're, they're much more likely to get onto a training programme that way, rather than applying first time overseas because yeah. preference is given to those who are in the system already. Okay, um, what is the next step to be a specialist after getting a job in the UK for a histopathologist? So I think they're saying if I come in at a middle grade rather a consultant, how do I work towards becoming a specialist in the UK? I think either way you look at it, the route is the same across all specialties. Mm -hmm. uh, so for international doctors, we've done, as I say, blogs and blogs already about the CSER process mm -hmm. and about UK training process. If you were coming as a pathologist as an ST3 level, for example, you could go through something called CSER CP, where yeah. you transfer into a UK-based training scheme, and you would go through the system, set your CCT your, um, for your certificate of completion of training, as a UK trainee would do, and get on specialist register that way. Uh, the alternative is to go through something called CSER. Now, whether you are a consultant or a specialty doctor, um, CSER is, if you've got a number of years of experience within pathology already, is going to be your best shot at getting on specialist register and that is tailored to the individual um, we've got lots of other resources about yeah. CSER that, that you can access but essentially it will still take you at least a couple of years to get onto the, the specialist register okay next question best p 
places to find resources. So I think this is in reference to the FRC Path 1 and the FRC Path 2 examinations. I think it depends on what subspecialty you're in. So yeah. obviously like if you're doing FRC Path Hematology or yeah. Histopathology uh, or, or even Micro. Um, for me, my background was within Hematology, so Blood Academy was one that came up very often. Uh, there is an FRC Path Revision course that's run out of uh, London, uh, usually within uh, like March to May each year. Mm. Um, and that provides a really good resource of kind of a mock exam where you would have an FRC Path examiner give you a, a sort of a three day uh, sort of trial of what yeah. the exam is exactly going to be like. Um, I think you've done a bit of research. Yeah, the so with the histopathology exams, there's loads of resources online, but actually the best place to look first and foremost is the Royal College website, mm. because there you're going to have a look at the curriculum, you're going to be able to see exactly what questions in terms of specific modules are going to come up. On there you can find mock questions, courses, lectures, you can pay to attend kind of weeks in the UK. There's one running at the moment, Harlow Hotel. So you can go there for, I think it's like three, four days. Sounds lovely. Yeah, three, four days, histopathology, and that's for the FRC Path 2. Similarly, there's things online, the ePathology Hub, which is a great hub for mock questions, clinical scenarios, um, and again, online courses that are somewhat free and some are paid for um, to help you with preparation. Again, there's papers online, clinical scenarios, there's all sorts you can find out there. Um, so yeah, lots lots to revise, but... Yeah, Google is your friend and speak to colleagues who have gone through FRC Path as well. They'll be able to tell you how they revised and what sort of resources they used as well. So the next question is about the FRC Path 2, so the examination day. What What is it actually going to entail? Um, so we know that the FRC Path 2 is actually done over two days because of how big big is, yeah. how big the exam actually is and it covers six individual modules and each module can take up to about three four hours um so yeah it's a two-day process they they don't they don't rush it and you're um, covering things from surgical histology cytopathology and there's the frozen sections microscopic pathology so there's all sorts covered um and again if you really want a breakdown of the frc path two day the best place to look is on the blog Vlog. I was going to say the Royal, the Royal College, College website. website. I think our vlog's better, honestly. Our vlogs. Our vlog. We did a full breakdown of FRC Path Part One and Two and what to expect on the days. Uh, if you want it in a lovely visual format where you get to see my beautiful face, oh, then uh, the vlog is the best place to be. Okay. But obviously, if you are looking for refined details, there is quite a large document on the Royal College website. And which that, yeah, and that document outlines what you're allowed to bring into the exam, what you're not allowed to bring into the exam what you need to fill out beforehand, where to be, what time. So do look on there, download all of the bits you can. Was that the wrong answer? I thought the vlog was... No, I think, yeah, the vlog, the vlog's the place to be. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then the Royal College website. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> right, next question. How many attempts do I get? So for each one, you answered this earlier. Four. Four attempts to each exam. I think you can apply for a, an, an additional set if you have mitigating circumstances i would say at the moment a pandemic probably counts as a mitigating, mitigating circumstance, circumstance. Yeah. Uh, or any personal uh, issues that you've had that would affect your ability to, to sit or pass the exam um, but that has to be made via a, a mitigation paper mm. um, which you need to submit to the royal college which you can get on that blog no i'm not gonna <laughs> make that mistake again on the royal college website on the royal college website okay one last question what are the job prospects for someone with full FRC path? I mean, we kind of answered it earlier on, but they are incredible. There are so many opportunities in his pathology in the UK. Whichever subset you're interested in, if you hold FRC path, that is, and that's the full, that's so part one and two, mm. that's your golden ticket in the UK. Um, it doesn't mean that you'll be successful at every interview, it doesn't mean every trust will want to interview you, but very much depend on your CV and how it's, uh, how it's explained to the department and what you've been doing in your home country, but that is the most desirable qualification uh, that there is. Um, and yeah. I can't speak highly enough of the team that we've got that, that work here with this pathology. So um, if you do hold that exam, do please get in touch with us because we will definitely be able to help you locate a job.
Right everyone, thank you so much for watching our video on histopathology within the NHS. If you have another question which we haven't yet answered, send them in to us. Send them in to us at apply at bdiresourcing.com equivalently. If you already have full FRC path and you are looking for a job within the NHS, do get in touch with us. Okay. Uh, we'd love to be able to help you. Um, <laughs> if you do have any ideas for any other vlogs, then um, feel free to contact us as well. We'll, uh, we'll do more, more filming. Comment below. Thank you. Bye. Bye.